I've clocked in over 1,000 hours of VTubing experience across an entire year, and today I'll be teaching you what you need to know as a VTuber in 2022. All I ask you in return is for you to smash that like button and subscribe as it helps out the channel a ton. Let's get it. First on the list is consistency. People are creatures of habit and tend to be more inclined to do something if it's familiar to them. This means that a consistent stream schedule is an important factor in helping bring viewers back as they won't have to pull in Emily Watson and become a detective just to know when you're live next. Whether you stream for three days a week, one day a week, or every other week, make sure you don't make the following mistake because it could cost you big time. Avoid leaving long, inconsistent gaps between streams. And before you mention anything about breaks and burnout, I'm not saying you can't have a break. In fact, you should have breaks. As well as drink and eat properly, don't maybe come into your streams and spam the hydrate redeem. <laughs> Avoid doing something like streaming for three days in March, abruptly falling off the face of the earth afterwards, only to come back suddenly in June, stream for three weeks, disappear appear again and come back four months later. If you are streaming just for fun and don't mind your viewer count or growth, then you don't really need to worry about this, you do you fam. But for those interested in actively growing, you need to avoid this as much as possible, as doing so can make it nearly impossible for you to build a core audience who are going to be your most important followers, as they are usually the ones to come to multiple streams, help promote your content, consistently engage, and will keep following you through thick and thin no matter what games you play or content you create. These people are the biggest goats of your fan base and you need to cultivate a space to properly allow for them to flower and bloom. That being said, when you first start out, chances are that you're not going to have many viewers at all, let alone a core audience. You might even be streaming to zero viewers for a few days or even weeks. But as a VTuber and foremost as a streamer and an entertainer, you need to, well, entertain. People go into Twitch or YouTube or any other streaming or social media sites to be entertained. And don't tell me you don't, I see you scrolling through hours worth of TikToks in a day. Now here's three things you should do with all that in mind. Number one, turn off viewer count. Don't look at it and just generally keep your mind off it. It's going to distract you and affect your mood. You might end up getting upset seeing your viewer count drop, or you might only try to entertain when you see people are watching you. This might be a conscious or subconscious thing, but the point is to be consistent not only with your timing and stream schedule, but your ability to entertain as well. Besides, Twitch's live views aren't accurate as they are usually very late to update, so by the time you see that counter tick up, that person may have already left and you've missed your chance to hold their attention. Number two, keep talking. Your job is to keep your audience engaged and that won't happen if you don't speak in your streams. The one exception to this is if you are a god gamer or really good at your craft, in which case people watch you for your gameplay, like someone like Faker. Faker, what was that? But the vast majority of people aren't professional top tier esports athletes or crazy speedrunners so you gotta engage your audience another way. So here's a few tips in doing so. Prepare some notes beforehand. Got a story to tell or something interesting happened recently? Write it down so you don't forget and panic scramble when you try to remember it midstream. Commentate what you're doing, tell us what you plan on doing, what you think of the game, what you are currently doing, and your thought process in general. This can also apply to other categories like art streams, just chatting streams, etc, etc. Basically, what you usually think in your head, verbalize it out loud. It might be tough at first, but let your personality shine through these even when you know no one's watching. People come to streams to interact and see the raw side of the streamer, otherwise they'd just be watching edited content like YouTube or TikToks. Number three, don't rush. You might be saying, Zikos, I'm not an entertaining person at all. I'm not funny. I don't have any stories. I'm bad at games. Hush, my sweet summer child. That was my mentality too when I first started, but entertaining people is a skill that you develop over a period of time. Some might pick it up quicker than others, but the fact of the matter is that there's no need for you to pressure yourself into being a top class entertainer immediately, especially when you first start out. As Zhang Li says, Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. The more you do it, the better you'll get, and you'll see the fruits of your labor sooner than you may think. I mean, if you think about it, entertaining chat as a massive streamer with thousands of viewers is actually a similar experience to entertaining zero viewers because chat goes so fast that you'll hardly be able to keep up most of the time. So knowing how to entertain with zero viewers is not only important at the start, but in the long run as well. Let's say you've been streaming for a while now and you've finally garnered some viewers. First off, good job, and I'm proud of you. You've worked hard and it paid off. But now you have an additional objective. Give them a reason to stay. One of the best and most consistent ways 
ways to improve your community interaction is actually really simple. Respond to chat. And no, I don't mean respond with just one word answers or bodily noises. I mean, have conversations with your chat. A conversation is essentially just a back and forth between two or more people, right? They pass you the ball, you catch it, and you throw it back, rinse and repeat. Similarly, with streaming, chat sends a message, you read it out and respond, but now pair it up with a follow-up question, throw the ball back at them. You keep up this back and forth and long and behold, you now have a conversation. They have a good time talking to you, you have a good time talking to them, and with those you do it with will naturally be more likely to stay because now they have a reason to stay. You. Not the gameplay, not the game, or your avatar no matter how cool it is, but you and your personality. Eventually, you'll build up a community, and a good community will give new viewers another reason to stay as people generally want to be a part of something too. Okay, so talking to people is great and all, but what other things are there that can help with engagement? Something like the Twitch integrated throwing system would work great in this case. I've got a video up on that if you want to watch it after this, or otherwise stuff like polls or predictions if you're on Twitch. Basically, you want your audience to be actively doing things and getting themselves involved rather than just passively watching. Think about it, when you were in school, you probably probably learned something a lot quicker and easier and it retained it in your mind for longer when you jotted it down or answered a question about it rather than someone just telling you in a lecture right? The difference between active learning and passive learning. So that was a lot about your community, but how about other VTubers and their communities? Given enough time around other VTubers, you'll eventually make friends and with it opportunities to collaborate. Now collabs was something that I had a lot of trouble with finding any information or tips about at the start. I still remember prior to my first collab, I had to go and scour the entirety of YouTube for how-to videos. I had absolutely zero idea as to what I was doing and I had to experience it all on the fly. But I did learn a lot from it along with all the other collabs that I've done thus far. So worry not, dear aspiring VTuber, for I will tell you the secrets of collabing. <laughs> So I'm assuming you've already secured a collab, which usually takes no more than just a simple ask. So now I'll go through the process of what goes into a collab and what you need to know and look out for. Collabs are different to normal solo streams in one main way. You, well, have a collaborator. Because of this, it's good etiquette to focus more on talking to your collab partners than your chat. That being said, make sure you give your chat a heads up as some might interpret you not responding as you ignoring them, which of course is not the case. One way to circumvent this is setting up a push to talk button where you can speak to your chat without your collab partners and their chats hearing you. When setting up collabs, make sure to take into account time zones and each other's schedules. For converting times, I like to use the site called Roll Time Buddy, which allows you to easily see and coordinate times with multiple time zones. I'll leave the link to that down in the description below. Be prepared that sometimes you'll need to stream at crackhead gremlin hours in order for a collab to take place, but don't overexert yourself. You don't have to do it, but it's best to keep this in mind. So now that I've told you what to do before and during a collab, let's talk about who you should be collaborating with. To me, a collab should be done with people who you know you have a pretty good chemistry with already, because at the end of the day, you're streaming it and making it part of your content. Otherwise, you'd just be playing games off stream, right? So because of this, the experience of the people watching you are just as important as your collab experience during stream. So even though you aren't able to interact with them as much as solo streams, you still need to show your audience an enjoyable time. If you've got a collab partner that you don't get along with, then it's most likely going to be an awkward and forced stream, both from the viewers and streamers' perspectives. Because of this, I end up collabing mainly with people I know and close VTuber friends. Occasionally, I'll collab with some others that I'm not too familiar with, but they do tend to be connected to my close friends, so I reckon that if they get along with them, they'll most likely get along with me. And more often than not, it does turn out that way. <laughs> Though disclaimer, sometimes they don't, so it is important to keep an eye out for it. Now time for some quick fire tips in under two Two minutes. Okay, number one, VTubing is an expensive hobby. So what I recommend you to do is start with PNG tubing. This is essentially where you get a PNG of your model and avoid the entire rigging process, which will save you a ton of moolah. If you do want to get movement on your model, check out Fugi. It's a simple program that allows your PNG to react every time you speak. And there's also a software called Video tube. that gives you more control and options. Do this for a little bit to test the waters out and see if VTubing is for you. And if it turns out not to be the case, well, no big deal. You haven't wasted too much money and 
not many resources. Number two, get better tracking. The most straightforward way to get better tracking is of course by getting a better webcam or iPhone for that sweet, sweet, true depth technology, which is available to iPhone Xs or above. But having the highest quality camera doesn't matter if it can't pick up your face properly due to poor lighting. So I advise you get a cheap ring light off Amazon or something similar depending on what suits you. It's a low cost but super effective way to improve your tracking immediately. Number three, review your streams. By looking back at your past streams with a critical eye, you are able to see what you can do better add on and just generally improve your streaming quality. If you enjoy watching your own streams, chances are that others will too. And that goes the other way around as well. Number four, be sure to check out your audio levels before streaming to ensure that everything's level and nothing is drowning you out. Number five, and lastly, I may not have answered your queries in this video. So if you want to ask me questions directly, come check me out over at twitch.tv slash zikoch. At the end of the day, being a VTuber also means being an entertainer. Yes, it's fun to create your character and act through them on Twitter, Discord, etc. And it feels it's great being able to represent yourself through an avatar specifically catered by you. But if you are really serious about having a platform and growing as a VTuber, you need to create content, stream, make videos, make art, make music, be an entertainer. Is it slow and difficult and will there be moments where you want to quit? Absolutely. But your hard work and perseverance will pay off as long as you are consistent and willing to learn and improve every step of the way. And if you're still unsure about a few things and want to learn more about the process of becoming a VTuber, watch my how to be a VTuber in 2022 video here. And if you're wondering when the best time to start is, it's now. Now's the best time. Start it. Go. Now. No. <laughs> Good luck out there. Ciao.